Well, Dennis Rogers, um, his wife Tammy, his daughters Crystal, uh, Kimberly, and their son Lane, they go back with our family a long time in racing. And uh, everybody knew Dennis as River Rat. That was his race name. And Dennis always had fast cars. Dennis literally ate and breathed his cars. Uh, he was a serious, serious avid racer and his cars were fast. And the one thing about Dennis is if uh, you didn't have enough money for his car to leave the line in a race, he wasn't gonna race you. It didn't matter how much you begged him, how much you gave him in lengths or whatever, he just wasn't gonna leave. In order for his car to leave that line, it was gonna be worth it. And what, what did he go by that day? River Rat. Dennis is River Rat. And uh, that's what I said during all of this. The one thing about Dennis, um, of course he had the accident at um, Evadale. Evadale. But Dennis, is a, he's a fighter. He's a little guy, but I'm telling you, he's tough as nails. And uh, the, the sad thing is, is he, he fought all that time in the hospital and um, just barely clung to life. And then for this to happen to him, to him to get off his path and be lost or whatever the situation may be, it's really sad that somebody could take advantage of such a good person that uh, Dennis really wouldn't have heard a flea. Remember, what about the day he had the accident? How many incidents at the track? Um, well, we weren't there. We did go to the hospital. Uh, I was on the phone with Lane. But uh, my son was on the phone with his son, and uh, apparently he had come up to the line to start the race and uh, revved his motor up, but then he never left the line. The lights dropped. The lights dropped, and he, he never left the line. So they went over to the car, and he was he was basically he was blue, and purple. He was blue and purple. He was It was that quick. Uh, I, I believe they determined it was a heart attack, and uh, he, they worked on him all the way to the hospital. They got him to the hospital. Um, it was really trying on his family, just as this is, and, and our hearts grieve right now for his family, and uh, we just hope that the truth comes out, and if there has been an injustice against this man and this family, that the punishment be swift. What do you think about the search, stopping the search right now? What are the investigations going on? Well, I believe that, I do believe in our law enforcement, and I believe that they would not have stopped the search if the tips and the information that they had weren't very good. I don't think that they would have just lightly taken somebody's word and stopped this massive, this massive search because I'm telling you, people would still be out there right now looking for him. And I know that Dennis, if he could see everything that's happening, he, he would be happy and he would, he would believe it to be true because he, he knew that he had a lot of friends. What about his cars? I mean, fastest cars you said he... he... Um, I'm not sure how fast his cars were. My son and my husband would be uh, more up to that. I just know he was fast and he always won. I can tell you that. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't have much to say about him. Everything's in my heart about him, you know. It's just he was like. Tell he, me what you remember about him from back in the racing days. Everything I've known the man since I was born. Uh, been with him all the way through. He's been with me and my dad and their whole racing crew the whole time. And it's just before all this, before all the stuff happened with him, uh, with his health, he was pretty much my second dad. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was at his house. We was, Working on the cars, or we was going on the racetrack. Tell me about yeah. him in the racetrack. How he handled the racetrack, how he did in the racetrack, and about the accident. Well, about he just, finish. yeah, but I say he just kind of, kind of ran the racetrack. Everybody knew him, whether they were from the South Side Houston, whether they were from Dallas. You know, had a lot of buddies out in Dallas, and everybody knew who he was. Whether they were from anywhere over Texas, they knew who the River Rat was. And uh, like Mom said, they, if you didn't have enough money, he wasn't going to race you. It was all about money. He put the money into the cars. He wanted some money back out of it, just to have a little fun. But at the same time, he'd help anybody out. If you didn't have enough money to race him, he wouldn't race you. But if you didn't have enough money to make it home, he'd give you money to make it home. And it was just that, that's the kind of guy he was. And I hate to see him in the situation he's in now. <laughs> so. What about the night of the uh, incident with the, with the light? What do you know about that? Oh, uh, well, 
I just know that uh, he was at Evadale out towards Beaumont, and uh, he had done his burnout. He had already staged, or pre-staged and then staged, and when the lights dropped, his car stayed revved up, and when the track crew got to his car, he was, uh, he was already blue and purple, and he was kind of laid over towards the shifter of the car. And they got him out, and I believe there was a woman there that was a paramedic, and uh, they started doing CPR on him. Well, they got him in an ambulance and got him to the hospital, and they said that he had went, I think, two minutes, two and a half minutes, something like that, without oxygen to his brain, and uh, that's what got the whole deal. He was in the hospital for weeks. We were there every day. You know, he fought the whole way through, clinging to life. At one point, the uh, doctors there in Beaumont at the hospital told his wife that she was going to have to start making decisions on uh, pulling the plug on him. And, I mean, it, it got to all of us. We were in the waiting room when doctors come in and said all that. But we just kept fighting through. We knew that he could make it. And we uh, got in a big ordeal with that whole hospital because we knew that there was something that they needed to find out. We didn't feel that they were looking hard enough for what the problem with the situation was. And uh, we finally fought enough that they got stuff figured out and got it enough to get him out of it and keep him alive and give him a life but after that he just wasn't he didn't he didn't function the same way and he didn't have much of a memory uh, he didn't remember who I was and that's what that got to me real bad because like I said every Friday Saturday and Sunday I was at his house and after the after the whole situation there he had no clue who I was it just it just got to him you know there was a lot of stuff going around that it was nitrous poisoning that he'd be all right because we got all those racing for him. And it's just I, I stayed on those and uh, kept everybody updated to what was going on. And uh, I hate to see him in the situation he is now. You said you had a little shifter down, huh? Yeah, we were. Uh, it was a few months. Uh, it was a little bit before everything happened out there at Evadale that uh, I was on the phone with him. And we were going to head out to the racetrack that day. And he had this deal about flea markets and swap meets. He liked to go out there and pick stuff up. And uh, he was at the flea market. And I had talked to him. And uh, a couple of hours went by. He called me back. And we had already been talking about going to the track. And we had, we had a little stuff we had to do on the car, you know, a little tune-up, checking the plugs, gap on the plugs and stuff. And he called me back about an hour or two later and said that, uh, he was, he was in tears, I could tell, and I'd never heard the man cry, never seen him cry, nothing. He, old hard-nosed country boy. And uh, you could hear it in his voice, and he told me we weren't going to the track. And, well, I was disappointed because I was like, you know, I know the car's there, I know it's ready to go. We just got to do a little bit of stuff, and we'll be ready to go. And he uh, told me that his shop burnt down and that uh, he was heading back to the house. He was hauling ass back to the house because his shop was on fire. But uh, it burnt down, I believe it was a 67, 68 Camaro. And uh, the car was gone, engine was still good. He spent a couple of thousand dollars getting everything, getting the lines and stuff ran back on the engine, but the car was completely gone. I still got the old shift knob in my toolbox at the house, about half melted. <clears throat> yeah, if you wanted to race him, you know, he'd be the first one to talk some crap to you and get some stuff going on, get something, get something stirred up. But uh, like I said, he'd also be the one to give you a couple of bucks to help you make it home or help get you through the day.